Welcome to the Sam and Joe VA Show, where we teach women just like you how to start and scale a thriving virtual assistant business. We're your hosts, Sam and Joe, and get ready to have the control, flexibility, and freedom you've always dreamed of. Welcome to episode 195 Our Failures and Face Palms. We want to let everybody in on a little secret. Well, many secrets, I would say. (laughs) Big, the overall (laughs) secret is guess what? We aren't. Perfect. <gasps> no. It's true. It's true. <laughs> we are yeah. not perfect. And I think in this current digital world that we live in, it's really easy. And we do this ourselves. It's really easy to get caught up in what everyone else is sharing, how they're coming across online, on social media. And it making us feel bad about ourselves. Like we need to be doing that because look at, look at their life. They've got Mm -hmm. it all together. Everything. Oh my God. Not only is their business profitable, but they've got a perfect relationship and their kids are always so well behaved. (laughs) Yeah. Making so much money and they always look beautiful and everything is all hypey. And we like to think that we tell it like it is. Like, I feel like, especially here on the podcast and in the mastermind, I think we are very honest about so much, (laughs) so much of our lives, both business and a little bit of personal as well. But we realized the other day that is that coming across on our social media or are we just sharing the highlights? And we would hate, we would hate that, right? We we don't want to be that type of coach, that type of business owner. Yeah, where you're looking at us and thinking, oh, I'm just not good enough and I don't have that life and I must be failing and I must be doing all these things wrong and I need to be like them. Like we never, ever want you to feel like that. So that's our inspiration for this episode because – Let's go through some of the things that just make us feel so shit and we just can't stand seeing. And I know that others looking at this are going to feel really bad about themselves. So I have to force myself to not look at those posts, those reels, Mm. and like really remember that it is not all roses and things are kind of twisted or you know, kind of stretching the truth. And there's a whole lot of things behind the scenes that we don't see. My big one is when someone posts and says that I retired my husband (laughs) and I'm making so much money. Oh my God. Mark and Lance dream about that day. But let's be honest, is it ever going to happen? I don't know. I don't even want that. I don't even think our husbands want that. I don't know. Mark Mark said the other day that he would actually quite happy being a full time stay at home dad. And I actually he would he, he would could be, be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he I think he's got it he's more natural in that role than I am. Whereas I was the full time stay at mom, at home mum for for so many years. Whereas I actually think if, if the roles had been reversed, he would have done a much better job than me, a hundred percent. He's the one that goes to school camp. He knows all of the parents at the school. Like, he is so good at being a parent of a school child. <laughs> like, it's amazing at that. Oh, yeah. How can I think of anything worse? I think from the outside looking in, you probably think that I would be the one that would be chatting with everyone at the school gates and knowing all the teachers. That's Mark. I'm the <laughs> one that's sitting in their car down the road and around the corner <laughs> waiting for their children to come to me. I can't remember yeah. the last time I stepped foot in, 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 in a school. <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> so interesting. Anyway, we're getting a bit off track. All right. Yeah. So retiring husbands, the one that I can't stand seeing. <laughs> okay. How about you? My big one was at the end of last year and that trend that I think it was the, the 2023 wrap-ups. 
oh my fucking god excuse my french we were we were coming out of burnout we were still in burnout when all these reels were popping up and i was just like fuck off i don't want to I don't want to see your highlights <laughs> because I'm in the depth of a low light right now. Yeah. And, and it's not and like good on them for celebrating. Right. But it was not what you wanted to see at that time. It made you feel shit. Yeah. Oh, so we're yeah. not saying that those people shouldn't share those things. It's the like, yeah, this is, this is how it can affect us. Yes. By seeing those things. Yeah. Did you have another one? What what else do you like cringe or it just makes you feel bad when you see them? Oh, I just I just think there's there's and we watched a video from Kate Tone who beautifully articulated this, where she's so sick of seeing people kind of manipulating people by mm. saying, you know, that they are doing a hundred K months selling digital products. And like and they may well be, but remember that it is not profit. And it is, it takes a lot of work and energy and time to get there. And it takes a team. They are not doing that on their own. And like this, the reality of what that actually takes to do that is, is something that they don't talk about. I think they make it out like it's so easy and simple to manipulate into buying their digital product. Do you notice that they're all selling digital products on how to make 100K months? And we're all feeding into that. And every time we buy one, then they are actually making 100K months. So, yeah, looking at that and thinking, oh, I wish that I could be there. Like, well, actually, yeah, it's not as easy as they make it out. Yeah. Yeah. The other one for me, and I guess it's kind of a, a, along the similar lines of that, is that one. And it's that making money while you sleep. Like, yeah, like. We can some mornings wake up and there's some alerts that have come through where someone has been on the website and purchased something. But more often than not, that's the seven dollar calculator. Yeah. <laughs> and and it takes a lot of work to get to that point where you are having thousands of dollars of ads running if you're selling digital products. Like that's what they are doing. It's not that they are not doing anything to get the money while they sleep. It's that they have a whole lot of work that they have put into all of their content mm -hmm. and their automations and their funnels and their ads. So please don't look at that and think that that is just like easy either. Are there any more, more kind of like, I guess, personal ones that trigger you? I think I see a lot of people like, really dressed up, a lot of makeup, looking stunning and dancing and being really extroverted. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, mm. I need to be showing up so much more and being like that. And then I'm like, no, 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 that is not me. That is not my personality. Like, stop, stop looking at that. I do not need to be that person. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think for me, it's the kind of you can have it all. Like those those that are coming across that they have got it all together, like and they're real. They they're in a beautiful kitchen with their beautiful children, baking beautiful things, and <laughs> everything just looks clean and sparkly. And they're wearing beautiful clothes, and yeah, yeah. yeah well, I've got to remember that that is not. They did not just randomly grab their phone and set it up. They actually went around and placed everything in a particular place and got everything all set up and prepared for that. That is not just one snippet of actual real life, like candid. That is no. staged. Yes. It is staged. Remember that. What you see online is staged. Yeah, as soon as, soon as you've got a camera out. It is, it's not a natural thing, right? <laughs> Someone yeah. hasn't captured that on the fly. That is totally yeah. set up. Okay, so <laughs> those are the things that we see online that, that kind of trigger us and make us feel bad about ourselves. And we know we're not, a, we're not alone in that. Those of you that are listening, 
may not be those particular types of things that are triggering to you, but we're sure there are others that just make you feel less than or, or not enough. So let's go through. We have, we've kind of sat down this morning and we've come up with, not come up, this is it's not made up, this is real. <laughs> it's totally it's real. Up, stories. <laughs> we've decided to share seven of our biggest failures and face palms with you so that you don't put us on that pedestal you don't assume that everything is rainbows and unicorns 24 7 because it's not like this this business roller coaster is literally that it's a roller coaster yeah there are some high highest of highs for us but there's also some lows so we're going to share some of those lows with you today yeah okay the first one our first round of launch in 30 days, our launch of our signature course, launch in 30 days. We had such high hopes for that first round. We had a big goal of selling 30 places in that first course. We'd invested $20,000 in this launch. Oh, the sales page, all the copy, the emails, etc. And what happened, Sam? <laughs> we did not sell 30 places. That's mm -hmm. what happened. I, I think it, it, it felt really big that we didn't reach that goal and that we didn't make any profit whatsoever from that mm -hmm. first launch. Let's be honest, there was no profit. I think it felt really big at the time because, as you said, it, this was our signature course. This was what was going to really launch the VA Foundry, like take it to that next level. We'd been talking about it for years. We knew what we'd created it was epic. Like, we were super, super proud of what we created. And then, I guess, to not make any profit that first time. Like, that was tough. Like, that was hard. Yeah. We sold 13 places and we wanted to get to 30. That's quite a lot less yeah. than we'd wanted to. Yeah. And I suppose the lesson from that was that we just didn't have enough time or prioritize the time that we had into marketing the course and showing up and talking about it because we were so in the trenches of creating this epic course yeah. with a lot of video content and a lot of tutorials and a lot of resources that we, and you know, in hindsight, I actually really love now knowing that we've had some really great launches since then. I love that we put so much effort into making it absolutely epic mm. because it really is. And now we can deliver this amazing course to everyone because I would have hated us to kind of do a mediocre course because we spent so much time marketing. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was disappointing. It was really disappointing at the time. Very, very disappointing. Yeah, financially, we took a hit, could have done better. But yeah, we know where we went wrong. I guess it was that assumption that it would sell itself. Mm. Nothing sells itself. <laughs> no. Nothing. Nothing sells itself. Um, okay, so that, yeah, that was a big, did you say that was a failure or a face palm? Um, I think somewhere in between. Yeah. I think it wasn't, so. definitely wasn't a failure. Like. You know, a mistake is only a failure. Oh, what is it? A mistake <laughs> is only a failure if you didn't learn any lessons, or a mistake yeah. is only a mistake if you don't learn any lessons from it. Yeah, yeah, we learn a big one. We so a big we one. definitely learned a lot from that. Yeah. Next up, we didn't take our own advice. Do <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these? We didn't take our own advice. You know how we tell everybody that will listen, never start work with anyone without a contract, without something on paper, preparing for the worst. Not expecting the worst, but preparing for the worst. 
We're having a plan in place, having steps in place, a process for what happens if yeah. it does turn south. Yeah, we worked, we worked with somebody and when it came to parting ways, it made it harder to part ways because we didn't have anything in writing. Yeah, it made it messy and just like a bit icky, not feel nice for any party involved. No. Because we didn't know how to exit. Yeah. No. Yeah. So please always have a contract with anyone that you work with. Yeah. Big, big lesson. Okay, number three. This is a personal Joe one. In my VA business, oh, I I feel really bad about this one because it wasn't the person's fault. So we hired someone and quickly realized that they did not have the skill level that we had assumed that they had. And there was no way that they were cut out to do the role. And we had to let them go within the 90-day trial period, which is... If anyone has ever done this in New Zealand, it is awful because you cannot give the person any reason as to why you are letting them go. You just literally say this is not working out and that's it. It's done. They leave. And it is horrible for the other person. Because if you do give them a whole bunch of reasons, then you're opening yourself up for all this like litigation potential to happen. And so you actually say, and we had our employment lawyer in the meeting with us, and it had to be on Zoom because they were not in the region. And we had to let them go in their 90 day trial period on Zoom. It was awful. And so that recruit, not following the recruitment process was the big mistake there. They had done some testing. No one looked at the testing and checked the testing. And then others assumed that the testing had been checked and it hadn't been. And so hired them. The, you know, the rest of the process, the doing the reference checks, that was all, all checked out fine. That was the testing that we went back and then had a look at after we realized that they weren't really cut out for this. And we were like, did anyone look at this? Because this would have given us that indication that this person was not the right person to hire. And so this is actually really poor on my part, on Strictly Savvy's part, because that poor person, we've now put them through this awful, awful process where they are likely to feel really shit about themselves and had to be let go in such an awful way, like following legislation and process, but still awful. I feel bad. I feel really bad for that person because that is not on them. That is on us. There is, there is no it's winners. Fun. There's no winners in that situation. No, because that, that costs, that cost me thousands of dollars. We had to pay that person, obviously. And then you're paying your employment lawyer as well for mm -hmm. their time. Yeah. Yeah. Ouch. And they couldn't do any billable work. So we didn't get any billable like couldn't bill any of on charge any of their time, so we're just like taking that completely as a hit, which well, goes straight to your bottom line and drops that down. Yeah, I mean that was a waste of a recruitment process, the time and energy mm -hmm. that went into that, the onboard, yep. like like training her up. Yep, mm. team members' time to do that. Yep. Ouch. Yep. So yeah, we will never not follow the process ever again. That's a failure. That's not a face palm. That's a failure. Oh, yeah, that's a failure. That's, that's yeah. a real failure. You'd think that 12 years on, I would not let this happen, but it does. So I guess I guess you then reviewed how it happened. You had to, to ensure that it doesn't happen again. Yeah, too many people in the pie. Someone needs to be overall responsible and someone must watch the video and check. Ouch. Okay, the next one is a bit ouchy as well. This is, a, this is another foundry <laughs> one. Uh, this mistake has cost us around $1,500, give or take. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. It will take a few planners. Oh, we were cocky. We were cocky. Yeah. And we ordered more planners than we've been able to sell for this year. This year's 2024 BA Business Planner. And I think we were cocky because we were so proud of it. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> it really is. It is so good. And we know that it would have helped so many VAs that we were just like, yeah, th- this is just going to fly off the shelf. So many VAs are going to see the work that we've put into this and see how valuable it is. Like, there's no way that we're not going to sell them. Ah. Oh. No, Easy. One of those no-brainer purchases in our minds. It's yeah. a no-brainer for us to have it and use it. So surely every other virtual assistant across the country and across the ditch and further afield, surely they would see it and Im- immediately think it was a no-brainer for them as well. Yeah. yeah. Didn't quite work out that way. So we've got nice. we've got 43. 43 planners sitting in some boxes waiting for a home. They may, let's be honest, you know, we're in what? We're in March, coming up to the end of March. The majority of those planners will probably never find a home. Yeah, (laughs) because we made a commitment that we would never discount the planner because Mm. we didn't want anyone who'd purchased a planner to ever think, oh, I could have waited and I could have got a discount. But they are sitting there. So if anyone wants a planner, (laughs) an epic VA business planner, we actually have 43, so go for it. Buy a planner. We can send you one. Yeah. Yeah. $1,500 mistake, that one. And I mean... Someone listening might go, oh, it's only $1,500. But it's actually a decent chunk of change. And when you think about some of the other mistakes, failures, face palms that we've already spoken about and that are coming up, like this adds up very, very quickly. Yes. Yeah. Thousands of dollars with the recruitment process. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, not making any money on the first round of launch. Yeah, that's just one mistake that we're sharing Mm. with you. So, yeah, it adds up. Oh, 43. DM us if you want a planner. (laughs) All right. Number five. This is a big one to admit, actually, and to look back, that we have fallen short every year over the last four years in our financial goal, our annual financial goal for the VA Foundry. Every Ouch. year. Every year we've been in business. <laughs> we have never met that goal. And I, I think that we are fairly ambitious. So we'll we'll put out a very large goal. Oh, they're stretchy. They are <laughs> stretchy goals. Very stretchy. Yeah. So yeah, it's an interesting concept, isn't it? Like, do you actually put your financial goal as something that you are likely to achieve? Mm-hmm. Or do you really push it, like, beyond what you think you can ever achieve? Because there's that saying, right? If you aim for the stars or shoot for the stars, you might land on the moon. Yeah. Which is probably further than you would get if you had a very achievable financial goal. Yeah. So did we end up achieving more than we would have if we'd lowballed our financial goal, right? I, I, I think so. Yeah. I think this is one of those gray area failures. Like on paper, it's mm. technically a failure, but in reality, you think of all of the the wins that we've had along in the past four years. And there's not much that we would change. A few things, obviously, because we're talking about seven in particular. But, mm. you know, overall, it's easy to get caught up in, in the numbers mm. rather than really look a bit deeper and, and appreciate what you have achieved and celebrate what you have achieved along the way. And we've done a lot of investing into the business mm. in the last four years. 
especially last year especially because yeah like, like let's throw out some numbers like last year our lowest month that we paid ourselves a profit share was four hundred dollars each yeah for one when, month when the email came through that month with the confirmed number my heart just sank it was like wow all, all that of work. that work all of that work yep. We have to pull ourselves out of that when that does happen. We have to pull ourselves out of that and be like, no, look, we this is what we invested. This is what we're like setting ourselves up for for the future. This is like a long-term strategy being in business and investing in our business, and investing in things like copywriting was one of our major investments that we made mm -hmm. last year. Yeah, there you go, so. guys. Yeah, mm. our lowest our lowest profit share four hundred bucks each one month. Mm. It's not a lot, not a lot. Can't buy the groceries and for that for the month. Ooh, nope. <laughs> it's about one week worth of groceries in our house. Like <laughs> ridiculous grocery shopping, crazy. Yep. Okay, two more to go. If you're still with us, the next one is around reels, especially last year. When I think about the amount of time and energy that we went into creating, I don't know how many reels we created last year for Instagram. Mm -hmm. Hundreds. Heaps. W would you say it's hundreds? Maybe. Oh, no, I can't guess. <laughs> At least 50, surely. At least 50. Yeah. We, we, we thought that we needed to show up more and for some reason we put all of our eggs into the real basket thinking that we were going to it was going to increase out the number of followers and it was going to increase the engagement that we were getting on our instagram account yeah it didn't <laughs> no i think we went from like 1500 followers to 1600 followers in like a year yeah and reminding ourselves like for me it's like it is not about the number of followers that you have. No. Like our other marketing strategies are working so much better than our Instagram account ever will. There are other ways that are far better for our business, our business model than mm. Instagram. So don't get us wrong. We're not going to stop showing up on Instagram mm. because it's important that we do have a presence there. But I think it's about yeah maybe not putting so much time and energy and also comparing ourselves to others on Instagram that are doing really really well we like we'd look at them and go oh, okay and we we won't maybe be really think well. doing really well think that they're doing really really well look like they are doing really well and, and there was this trend last year where and probably the year before where it was like the dancey the dancey reels Oh my God, I look at the ones that we attempted <laughs> to do and I just can't. Like, it's cringy. We were trying to be somebody yeah. that we aren't. And yeah. it is very obvious that we aren't the dancey <laughs> on Instagram type of people. So, mm -hmm. no, wonder, no wonder they didn't get, do very well. <laughs> yeah. We were trying to be people that we're not, trying to be others that we are not. We are not like them. We do not need to be like them no one wants us to be like them no no we just need to show up as ourselves yep. so much easier <laughs> yeah. pretending to be someone else that you're not is a it's, lot of energy it's exhausting yeah okay lucky last one oof that burnout burnout Ooh -wee, was you would say a doozy last a doozy. year. It was a doozy, yeah. We've done a whole episode on this burnout for good reason. It's like no matter how much we know about burnout and teaching others about all the things to do to make sure that they don't go into burnout, I just thought that we were immune to it maybe. Somehow it was just like not going to happen to us because we know how to not be in burnout. 
we were in burnout. We didn't even realize we're in burnout. Yeah. I was at one point I was like so incredibly productive. I was ticking things off left, right, and center and working like crazy and it felt fucking amazing until totally crash straight after. I feel like we were the last to know. I feel like <laughs> everyone around us started getting really worried and concerned. Like Mark and Lance, I think one night they both brought it up with us separately and it happened to be the same night that they were just like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. But then I, I think those that are closest to us here in the VA community could see a change in us. Like we were, sh- we were, we were showing up, but we were showing up differently. Our energy was different. Mm-hmm. I think we looked tired. I put on five kgs during our burnout late last year. That's a lot of weight. Is it, everything felt exhausting at that point. Yeah. Everything. My nervous system was horrific. It could never come out of its, whichever one it is. There's two, two the sympathetic and something else in your nervous system. Like I could never bring my nervous system down no. out of that fight or flight. Like I couldn't, no matter what I did, I couldn't. Yeah, I, I, I felt, I think coming out of it, I, I felt a bit embarrassed. Like we've always been very open about it. That's been very important to us. But I think there was, there, I did feel a bit embarrassed. Like we should know better. We should mm. have seen the signs. How did we not see the signs? How did we not see the signs? Yeah, I did not know that. Being super productive was a sign. No. But we should have seen some of the other ones that we do know about. I think we were too, we were just too in it. I think it, we were too close to it. We were too busy at the time to even be able to, I don't think we had the time to set, step back to see what we had become. We didn't, no, we didn't. We were so attached to this, these awesome plans that we had made that we, I didn't feel like there was any other option. We had to do them. We had to do the work. Fulfill what we had promised. No one else had put that expectation on us. No <laughs> one else had said, Sam and Joe, you have to do this right now. It was us. Mm-hmm. We were absolutely to blame for our burnout. Oh, God. (laughs) That feeling. (laughs) No, 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 no. So, let this episode be a, oh, okay, nobody is perfect. I don't need to put anyone on a pedestal because everyone is going through something. Nobody has it all together. Mm -mm. If you are feeling less than, Please remind yourself of that because even us, we have failures and face palms all throughout the year. And we're going to this year as well. Hopefully they're different because we learn lessons from them. There are going to be other things that behind the scenes we're going to struggle with. So we want to make sure that we are very open and honest and let you know those things because the last thing we would ever want is for you to look at us and make it make yourself feel like you are less than. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Sam and Joe VA Show. If you'd like to find out more, head to the VA Foundry website to check out the Mastermind and the amazing resources, courses, and coaching. You can find us at thevafoundry.com. 